Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. This evening, Carolyn Cooper McQuitt is training us on how to transform our business with a cohesive business plan. Carolyn, is it okay if we start with a couple of questions that will help us to get to know you a bit better? Absolutely. It's McEwitt too. Carolyn Cooper McEwitt. Okay, I really, I, I got it right in practice and I really screwed <laughs> it up in the real McCoy. Okay. It's all good, Roger. Here's your first question. What makes you so convinced that a formal business plan is an entrepreneur's superpower? I am absolutely convinced because for the last 32 years, I have been supporting, guiding, and teaching people to put business plans together. I have watched people transform their lives, their business, their success, their families, put their business into a structure and a form and a plan that's systematic, that they prepare for the future, that they're ready for the wave of success that comes once they've written their business plan and that it maximizes their potential. Great. So that is why, that's why. Okay, and a related question, uh, when is the right time to write a business plan? Well, I think the right time is now. A lot of people think that the right time to write a business plan is when you're starting a business. I disagree. I think we need to have a business plan. It's actually, once you've written it, it becomes an operating plan. What I've heard from a lot of people here today is when we discussed earlier that they have a business plan and it sits on the shelf or they have a business plan and it's in their head or they have a business plan and you know they're just not really connected to it they wrote it five ten years ago so i think the time to write a business plan is now great thank you audience if you have any questions in the course of carolyn's uh, uh, training please type them into the chat and periodically I will pose them to Carolyn. The uh, video recording of Carolyn's training session will be made public a little bit later this evening and you'll be provided with the link. Carolyn, are you ready to rock the stage? I am totally ready to rock the stage. Then off, Thank you, you, get, off you go, get rocking, the stage is yours. You, you got it. Thank you, Roger. So I welcome everybody here to find out what it is, what it takes to write a meaningful, powerful business plan. I call the business plan the grand plan. And it's my intention in this next 54 minutes to really bring you the tools and the strategies that I've learned over the last 32 years that you can take these ideas, principles and concepts and implement them to write your own business plan. So the six reasons I think we all need to have a business plan is to take all those ideas in your head. Like Susan said, she's got a brilliant business plan and it's actually here between her ears. Roger, you said the same thing. So it's time, I think for all of us to recalibrate and refocus and here's the six reasons. We need a structure for our business. We need to have a really strong foundation within our business that we can tap into. The business plan actually is a live plan, I call it. It's fluid. We connect with it on a consistent basis. And I think our business plan educates us on what's missing in our business. We get to pre-plan and prepare for the future so we don't make mistakes. It creates like this superpower clarity and focus on where you're going. And it really inspires you to move forward more consistently. You will set an absolute clear vision for the next three years with absolute specific goals and your leadership will absolutely level up. So the ideas that you'll come up with will be an opportunity to analyze what that is and put them into action. So building the solid foundation, I mean, I think these are phenomenal reasons. 
to write a business plan. So in this time together, what my intention, like I said before, is to really give you this power of purpose in making the decision to write a business plan is profound. Yes, it takes time to plan it and it will support you to shift your perspective and really believe in the success that you're working towards. You'll become systematic. And when all that business starts flowing in, you're gonna be ready for all that business. The five core fundamentals of the grand plan is what we're gonna go through. So we all have been so challenged in this last eight months, oh my goodness, on so many different levels that it, with our relationships, with our business, I think now is the time to write a business plan because we absolutely need to recalibrate. We need to reposition ourselves. We need to look at new options and new ideas on how we can change our business so we can transform it into this new market, this new digital transformation age. And personally, I want to let you know that Susan and I created the Grand Connection, which is a virtual networking organization. And it would never have happened if it wasn't for what is with this pandemic. It has become our calling, our purpose, our passion to really support businesses like you to get focused, to connect with the right people, to collaborate together, and to create opportunity. So what is, is we're facing this isolation as entrepreneurs, we're working from home. So how can we create a path and a plan and a roadmap for our business? So that's what you're going to find out. First thing I want you to think about is I love this quote. It says, be open to wonder rather than be closed by belief. And the center of everything that I do, uh, one of the things that Deborah mentioned um, earlier was really about her uh, mental fitness. And I think to write a business plan, you have to be ready and willing to step out of your comfort zone. This woman right here, Emma, was a mentor for me in my 20s. She taught me principles and protocols and practices. And I soared selling products in my 20s. I was the top sales rep in Western Canada. And what she taught me to do was think big, to dream big, and have 100% accountability. So I'm going to share with you what I call living above the line. Each moment in our business, each day, each hour, we have this power of choice. And I really believe right now we need to make a 100% decision to move forward and find solutions to the challenges that we're facing in our business. We need to have this sense of wonder and curiosity on what can be. Connect that to our purpose, our plan, and then put it into action. If we stay in a place that I call living below the line, which is a place of fear and doubt, procrastination and judgment or criticism, we get stuck. And the amount of energy to pull ourselves out of being stuck to what I call lifting yourself up to go above the line, I think is an injustice. We don't need to do that. So when you're gonna write this business plan, I want you to think about living above the line. The answers are out there. The resources are there. It's gonna take creativity, it's gonna take purpose, and it's gonna take planning. So this is the living above the line. I think we need to take inventory every day. And where those two lines are of decision on that chart is your comfort zone. We need to press out side of that comfort zone and take risks and move from fear to focus, from challenge to opportunity. So this is a video I just want you to watch here. It's called the five second rule. I think this woman's brilliant. Her name's Mel Robbins. You might've heard her. 
It's just a two minute clip I want you to listen to. When you understand the power of a five second decision, and you understand that you always have a choice to go from autopilot to decision maker, everything in your life will change. You will be a different negotiator, you will be different in sales, you will be unstoppable in the gym, because you will realize the amount of garbage that you put in the way of your hopes, of your dreams, of your potential, of your confidence, of your courage. Everything comes down to the decisions that you make. We all know what to do. None of us know how to make ourselves do it. I wanted to change my life. And I think most people that are miserable or that are, that are really like dying to be great and dying to have more, we want to change. We want to live a better life. We want to create more for our families. We want to be happier. The, the desire is there. Again, it's about how do you go from knowledge to action. So the first thing in this story that's important is realizing that the answer was in me. And my mind was telling me, pay attention. The next morning, the alarm goes off and um, I pretended NASA was there. It's the stupidest story. I literally went five, four, three, two, one. I counted out loud and then I stood up. And I, I'll never forget standing there in my bedroom. It was dark, it was cold, it was winter in Boston. And for the first time in three months, I had beaten my habit of hitting the snooze button. I couldn't believe it. And I thought, wait a minute, counting backwards? That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Well, the next morning I used it again and it worked. The next morning I used it again and it worked. The next morning I used it again and it worked. And then I started to notice something really interesting. There were moments all day long, all day long, just like that five second moment in bed where I knew knowledge, what I should do. And if I didn't move within five seconds, my brain would step in and talk me out of it. Every human being has a five second window, it might even be shorter for you. You have about a five second window in which you can move from idea to action before your brain kicks into full gear and sabotages any change in behavior. Because remember, your brain is wired to stop you from doing things that are uncomfortable or uncertain or scary. It's your job to learn how to move from those ideas that could change everything into acting on them. In the smallest moment, the, the So I'm here to invite you, to inspire you, to really bring the vision that you have within you into life. All the success that you dream of when you started your business, maybe you've been in business five or 10 years, is to invite you to rekindle that dream and rekindle that desire to go for what you want. And I think these are the six fundamentals of creating the grand plan. We have to bring that vision into being, but we have to design the vision first. I, I feel that this is where you have value. This is where you know who you are. This is where you know the value that you represent and the impact that has on people. I call another fundamental truth marketing. There's a lot of marketing. There's a lot of noise out there. But when people hear truth, I think it wakes them up. I think that is what attracts people to work with you. It's all about our credibility, how we create solutions for our people. And it's about the invitation process. A few people talked about that earlier um, on this segment. You know, we need to up the ante. We need to become uh, better leaders with better systems and better support. And the finances in our business, we need to have financial health in there too. So this is the first section. I think this is the foundation of the whole entire business plan. This is where I start people. This is the most important part to begin. So some people haven't created a business plan. This is where you start. You start with the center, the core. 
who, what is the value that you represent? You have to know that and absolutely with complete clarity. And it has to be the truth. It can't be just words. It has to have impact. That's what will create referrals and absolutely send people to you. You have to know your purpose, your mission. You have to know your why. So in my business planning process, I invite people to do their own video to record themselves and they have to share in the video what is their why. Why do they do what they do? And also I invite them to do the why for their customers. And I get them to re-record and re-record and re-record until it resonates as the truth for them. And then I see their confidence soar and I see them become so much more purposeful and passionate and go after their business. I think you have to do a lot of market research. I think you have to know what the industry has, the growth, the trends, uh, Mary Charlson's going to be speaking about that at our next Grand Connection. I think we have to have a pulse on what's happening. You need specific goals connected to intentions and your values. So it's not about just setting a goal for a goal. It has to have meaning for you because that will inspire you to take action and live above the line. The other critical piece that I've been preaching and teaching forever is we need power partners. We need people that believe in what we do in our business. A lot of people talked about that this morning too. Sandra, you, you spoke on that. And it's about setting up and building those meaningful relationships so they will recommend you to their people and also their communities that they serve. It's about us standing together to create win-win relationships. And it's about building the culture of your organization so it has a, a strong stand on those core values. Next piece, I call it attraction marketing. I've written thousands, I've led and taught and written thousands of business plans in the last 32 years. You can create the very structured formal plan that sits on the shelf that you don't look at again, or you can create a plan that absolutely represents who you are, what you stand for, and the marketing that you want to expose yourself to the marketplace. And I call it attraction marketing because I think you are a magnet. You will attract to you the people that align most with who you are, your character and what you stand for. I think we have to know how we are different, how we differentiate, differentiate ourselves in the marketplace. I think that truth marketing has to be real, authentic, your brand, and also the testimonials. I think marketing, I call it attraction, but I also call it appreciation marketing. Like we, we have to invite people to share on LinkedIn recommendations. That's appreciation marketing. I mean, I go on social media every morning and just send out the appreciation to other people because that's my way of connecting and giving back. But to me, that's communication, that's marketing. And I also know that we have to create agile marketing processes, systems, and mechanisms. Traditional marketing is broken. Writing a marketing plan for a year absolutely is out the window. We, each month, we have to think about our position, our perspective, the services, the programs, the packages, the products, and just be really fluid and flexible on how we're going to present them in the marketplace. And there's so much opportunity that's free to learn all of this. There's so many great programs like Roger's here. He brings in expert speakers to share this with you. You can learn from them. And you have to choose the platforms that you want to show up to present. And it's about market research. You really have to have a pulse on the other businesses 
that are doing what you do and see what you like and, and just mold your message and, and make it real. I, I love this book by Simon Sinek. It, it's, you know, I remember when it came out and I read it and I just, oh, I just did the happy dance. You know, people don't buy what you do. They buy, they buy why you do it. You know, for me, the grand connection, the reason that we had 86 people from around the world attend our virtual joint venture networking event last Friday is our why. Susan Jerima and I have taken a stand to really supply people with a place and a space that they can connect, create, and collaborate. So, you know, figure out your why. That's the juicy bit. That's the magic. And once you have that, everything else will fall into place. Okay, so sales. Honestly, I have been on a mission understanding sales and communications since I was 18 years old. I knew this was my ticket to freedom. I am in my sixth decade here. And I've decided to look at it at a very different perspective in the grand plan. I call it the CSI of sales. It's about building relationships and attracting businesses to you. The C stands for your credibility. It also stands for communication and connection. It's, it's how you create the processes and the mechanisms and the invitation process around that and the follow-up and building those solid relationships will increase your financial abundance. It's being consistent. It's developing this credibility factor of trust you and they like you and that you are there to support them. The S is solution. I believe that we're in business to really create solutions for people. I believe that we have to figure out how we are the answer to their problems, to their challenges, to their pain, to their obstacles. What is it that you do in your business that solves people's problems? This is critical to understand clearly in your business plan. And the last one is invitation. Oh my goodness. I used to teach uh, business planning at Douglas College and I would have a circle on the, on the board and I used to put a line through it with sales. I, I believe in not selling actually. I believe it's an invitation. It's an invitation to work with you. It's an invitation to participate in your programs. It's an invitation. And that just comes across so much more genuinely and sincerely. And also there's a key component that I think people forget about in their CSI of sales or CSI of invitation. It's implementation. You got to follow up. Oh my goodness. How many people have presented products and services to me and never followed up? There's no implementation. You have to have that in your system and commit to that. So you have to design your pipeline, your sales funnel, your people coming in, your payments processes and forecasts. What are the targets you wanna reach? You know, it really is about service principles and guidelines too. So let me see if there's anything else here. Yeah, your service standards, you, you, you have to know what those values are and what those service standards are defined within your plan. Now the operations. This is all about efficiency. Um, Val Lowe, who's here on the call today is absolutely brilliant at this area. Like each business has their own strengths. We're usually good at two of them. So we're usually good at the sales and marketing and operations and maybe not so much at the finance or we're excellent at finance. We're good at 
the sales and marketing, but not so good in the operations. So look at the areas that you have strengths and make sure you have those support systems in the areas that you have limitations because it's critical to the success of your business. So in this efficiency section of the plan, it's really about the process. It's about who, it's about how, it's about the planning, and it's about resources. In this section, I invite uh, my people to really look at internal and external support within their business. That has to be set up. We, we really never do this alone. And if you are doing it alone, it's critical. You could become so much more successful by having a support team around you. My big inspirational recommendation at this moment is find a mentor. My mentor, I've had many mentors over the years and they really pushed me farther out of my comfort zone than I ever would have done myself. And they, they saw the gifts that I had and they encouraged me and my confidence grew. They gave me pieces of the puzzle that I was not even aware that I was missing and supplied that to me. So I'm gonna invite you, find a mentor, choose someone uh, within a networking group, someone you would respect, someone you admire, someone who may have strengths where you have limitations. So invite them to work alongside you in a mentorship partnership. Also, business coaches are brilliant at supporting you to move forward faster. That's where this which will go in, in your plan here. And also mastermind groups. I'm absolutely passionate about mastermind groups. It is an opportunity to create accountability partners. So in other words, when you are accountable to someone else, it supports you to get out of your own way and you absolutely will eliminate those excuses or justifications why you're not going to do it because you'll do it. So accountability partners are critical within your business plan, your grand plan. And in this section, we talk about uh, tools and equipment and suppliers. I have a whole chart in there about that. So the money management segment is critical. I, I have seen and met so many businesses over the years that, that have no idea of where they're going, number one. They, have, they don't have any cash flow projections. They have no foundation to work from and no vision of where they're going to. The numbers need to be planned out and projected. It is so inspiring to know what you're building and where you're going to. In my grand plan process, I have a whole Excel spreadsheets that are already designed for you. I have the um, balance sheet, the income statement, all connected, the cash flow, projected cash flow. It supports you to think about the tactics and the targets of where you want to go to. And it has a break-even analysis in there too. So the last thing that we write in a business plan is usually the executive summary. But this is a working plan. This is a live plan. This is a fluid plan. This is a, the grand plan is something that you look at every single month and you update it and you use it. It doesn't sit on the shelf. It is actually your operational plan. So this piece is written after you've completed all the other section. This is the last section that you're gonna write. And the reason I've changed it from executive summary to leadership synopsis is this business plan is for you. It's for your leadership. It is written for you, for your team, for your strategic alliances, for your accountability partners. It is a live document that you can take 
a very strong position and run from. So the leadership synopsis, I think are the key highlights of the business plan. It's like when you read a book and you pick up the book and you look on the inside of the book and they give you all the great, great parts of the book that get you to buy the book. That's what this is. This is gonna be your purpose, your passion, um, some of your goals in here, your profit margins, you're selling the sizzle. It really is the highlights and the values. And um, you can share these elements with the people that are critical uh, in your power teams. So Napoleon Hill wrote a book a very long time ago, Think and Grow Rich. I must have read it. I probably read it about eight or 10 times. So what I'm gonna invite you to do is read it again. It's a fabulous book. It was written, I believe in the twenties. And in there, he talked about the power of seven. And I am formulating a mastermind group with the grand plan. I'm calling it the power of 10. And I really believe this quote, to pursue your dreams with support and borrow and use the education experience, influence and capital of other people. So in this concept of mastermind and leveling up your business, in preparing, getting prepared, planning, being ready for this success. We really have to define those business dreams that are percolating inside you. The, the grand plan will be a part of the process of taking those concepts and ideas and putting them into a form, a structure that you can implement and follow through. And then it also, I think, gives you a great opportunity that you can monitor it. Because what you can manage, you can measure. So manage your plan on a monthly basis. Um, some people say to do it quarterly, I disagree. I think we really have to visit it on a monthly basis. Carolyn, a question from Doris? Yes. Uh, would this work well with network marketing programs? I am not in one, but similar. Would this work well with network marketing, marketing? programs? Um, absolutely. Well, it's, it's anybody that wants to create the structure within their business growth. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, no Is there any other question? Questions? Well, um, uh, any special recommendations if I'm starting my work as a lost leader? Uh, could you reframe that question again? So uh, I understand. Chris, would you unmute and pose your question again to Carolyn? Yes, please. Sure. So, by lost leader, I meant that when I start, I'm not expecting to really make money at the beginning because the business plan to me indicates that something is expected to make money. And a business that does not make money is an oxymoron, a non-business because businesses have to make money somehow to survive. Yes. But I'm, but maybe it's uh, any special advice if I'm starting expecting as a lost leader, expecting to just uh, lose, you know, not make, lose money and not, you know, by expenses and lose time and not make money until the work is established. Um, 
Okay. So let, let me just rephrase what you said, just so I really clearly understand what you are, are sharing with us. So you're thinking that you have this business idea. You don't think it's going to be successful in the beginning part. You think it's a lost leader, you said. And is it connected to your purpose and passion on what you really want to contribute to people? It's my purpose and passion from this year. It is not very well connected to my uh, my uh, my 20 or 25 years of past experience, mm. which is one of the reasons why I would consider this to be a lost leader. Okay, so what it sounds like to me is it's Chris, right? What it yeah. sounds like what it sounds like to me is you need to do more market research. Market research, I, I still do market research on a weekly basis. I think market research will, will supply the answers. You need to research businesses, what you're thinking of going into in, in different countries. And I mean, Google is our great, great friend. So I think you need to do some more research. And also, I think you need to contact some of those organizations and uh, do a dis discovery call with them find out how successful. I think that you may not have all the information that you need yet to start this business. But the great, great beginning is do market research and really be bold in your research. See if people will talk to you because most people will love to talk about themselves and they will share a lot with you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. No, no further questions. Okay, darn. <laughs> I love questions. Honestly, people, I, I love the interaction of teaching. So um, anybody that's got any question, please feel free to ask. I love it. So what I truly believe will define your success in your business and in designing your grand plan is determination. It's making that decision to live above the line it's a making a decision on a consistent basis to be 100% accountable, to release all the doubt and the fear. I believe this last eight months has created a lot of businesses to elevate their level of determination. They're either making the big shift to become innovative, creative, and find solutions and answers living above the line or they're still in fear and doubt and they're waiting it out. I suggest not. I suggest to get to work. I suggest to have a determination to shift that doubt, to go from fear to focus, to talk to people, share with people, get on networking. They, there is a new phrase that they say that the new form of marketing is networking. That's why you're here. It's to connect with other people and share what it is you do. So the other core piece on determination that I believe makes all the difference is holding your vision regardless of your current situation. Keep moving forward and release that negative self-talk. Move forward, take the next step. The second area that I'm really passionate about is discipline. I love that book by Robin Sharma, The 5 a.m. Club. So just put in the chat if you are a member of the 5 a.m. Club. Well, I am. And I truly believe that daily discipline in the morning to get focused, to get grounded, to get clear on what's most important for that day is so powerful in our productivity, in our focus on moving forward in our business. And I think that everybody does not do this alone. So you got to create a support system, like I said before. You got to have your team around you, your tribe. If Marilyn, you don't have, you got no, uh, you got no takers for the five a.m. club. But, but you do have one for the 8 a.m. club. <laughs> oh, 
Apple II funny team. Well, you just might change your mind. I highly recommend that book, by the way. It's written beautifully. Robin Sharma, the 5 a.m. club. But honestly, I, I think at this time, we have to create discipline that more than ever. During this COVID correction, I call it, I think businesses have been coasting for a long, long time, a lot of businesses, including myself. And I think this COVID correction has brought truth to the surface, what is working and what is not working. And we need to educate ourselves. We need to work harder than we ever have. I'm having the best time of my life because I am super disciplined on moving forward and building my business and the Grand Connection. So stay accountable, follow through on what you say you're gonna do. Oh my goodness, that is discipline. And I believe we have to step it up and be the leaders that we are meant to be. You know, I, I don't know how old you are, but I don't have that much time left. I always say that I'm gonna live till I'm 120 <laughs> to my family. But you know what, we have work to do. And what greater joy is there than contributing to other people with purpose and passion with your products and services? So the third area that's absolutely critical is we have to be adaptable. We have to be able to be flexible, to be able to let go to lead and let go of the past, let go of the stories that no longer serve you in regards to your industry, to your business, how it used to be. Well, this is a new beginning. This COVID correction is creating a whole new world of opportunity for all of us. You just have to reach out there and go for it. So keep a deep sense of curiosity and wonder. When you face those critical times that you have to make a decision, really think up, look up, live above the line and make that decision to take a risk and, and move forward to those opportunities and act. And the last thing is I think what your clients, marketing, sales, all of it within this grand plan, it's looking to be authentic. It's just looking to be real. People want to deal with people that they can trust and know. So really be connected to your highest self within this business plan. Look at it as a grand adventure to define all these areas of your business and put it into writing and watch your inspiration soar. You know what? I would even guarantee you that you will become a part of the 5 a.m. club with me once you make that commitment. <laughs> ah, you'll probably put in the chat. No, I won't. Okay. So I think the critical piece about is being willing to share and serve. You know, Sumer, you're, you're doing, you know, great uh, videos for people and contributing to them. I mean, Roger, you've got this platform for people to, to work through their issues and challenges in their business and connect and, and collaborate too. So it's our job, I think, to share our wisdom, is to share our talents and our skills and our resources um, with our clients and our power partners. So it's time, ladies and gentlemen, if not now, when? You know, I, I love that video because it really supports us. There's lots of, um, um, Deborah would be able to tell you this, but in, in neuroscience and how the brain works, to go from, from your thinking brain to your prefrontal cortex, your doing brain, that five, four, three, two, one, action. You know, if it's not now, when? I mean, I think it's absolutely mandatory that you need a roadmap for the next one to three years. Some people do a one-page business plan. Uh, what I recommend, there's a great software online called Live Plan, which is super simple. Put in your information and it will basically uh, create the template for you and do that. 
I have one called the grand plan. You've seen the elements of the grand plan. I look at my business plan as a leadership plan that, that looks at the core elements of what the truth is about your business and sets up the systems and the protocols and the practices to follow through with that. I think now is the time to realize your opportunities that are available to you and be bolder and decide to redesign, recalibrate your business and your future vision. Um, yeah, and you know what? You'll develop so much confidence and clarity. It'll just be magnificent, I promise. So I'm a bit early here, Roger, you're gonna be happy about that. So my offer and ask is I would like to provide anybody here with a 30 minute complimentary grand plan discovery session. So it'll be on Zoom. You can email me and I would be happy to talk about your grand plan, your business plan for the future. Talk about your purpose, your passion and your vision, any elements of the plan. And my ask is I will be forming a focus group. I'm gonna be forming three focus groups. I'd like to do one focus group of 10 to 15 people on Zoom for startup business. I would like to do a focus group for businesses that have been in business five to 10 years. And then the third group would be 10 years and above. And my intention with that is to really find out specifically where the challenges are, where the obstacles are right now, and uh, be able to customize some solutions with that. So let me know if you're interested. Just send me an email and put in the subject line of the email, startup focus group, five year focus group, 10 years plus focus group. Thank you. And my last slide is this. Please come and join us. Uh, my business is Inspired Business, as I said, and there's my email. And please come to the Grand Connection, grandconnection.ca. We have events every two weeks. We have expert speakers, rounds of networking, and mastermind breakout sessions. And we welcome you. Always happens on Fridays, every two weeks. And also, if you come to Kelowna, you might see me hiking or doing yoga up here. I'm absolutely committed and live above the line every day to do my yoga and my hiking and strength training. So Roger, I am complete. Thank you for listening. Well, uh, you are complete, but I would sure like to hear a client success story. Somebody who's oh. gone from a complete, uh, there's no way in the world I will ever in a thousand years write a business plan to, oh, Carolyn, thank you for supporting me to write a business plan that has changed my world. Okay. Tell, tell us one uh, or two of those. Well, she's on this call right now, I believe, if she made it. So one business plan was this. She was a uh, very uh, experienced 12-year registered massage therapist looking for her purpose and passion. And along the process and journey of doing our business plan, she defined her ideal client, which was working with women with breast cancer. And in the process of creating the plan and the segments within her business protocols, she decided to create videos supporting women that have gone through the process to um, create better self-care, um, all the processes that happen after surgery and before. So she's created a whole program called the mastectomy guide that is absolutely profound and brilliant. She has created a team of support people, including doctors and experts. She is taking this business, I mean, globally. I mean, it is such a success story. And it in, the secret for me really is that she inspired me so much along the journey of creating this business plan that it just 
was such a humbling experience. And I just felt so blessed in supporting her to create that plan. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Is there something else in 30 years of doing this that jumps to mind? Yes, that procrastination and isolation is the greatest killer of all entrepreneurism. So if you're feeling alone, you're stuck, you're lost and meaningless, you know, reach out, join a networking group, reach out to somebody out there to support you to move forward and go from living below the line, which is stuck, to living above the line and start dreaming again about the power of possibility and your grand potential because it's there. It's there right now. Wonderful. Uh, Carolyn, on behalf of Vancouver Business Network, I want to thank you for sharing those wonderful words with us. I uh, knew that you would not disappoint. Your reputation preceded you and you lived up to it. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of us all, thank you very, very much. I'm going to uh, stop the record, but people who are here in real time, live audience, do not go away. Okay, back to you. Thank you.